Okay, so this is going to be a series of videos that teach you how to do these types of inheritance problems. This one is kind of the simplest type of problems. We'll go through the basic theory of how I like to work through these problems, and then I'll do some, um, each video will have two sample problems. You're welcome to stop the video anytime you feel like you're ready to go and do some practice on your own, but you'll definitely want to work through the practice problems to make sure you can do all of these types. So in one trait inheritance, we're really just interested in one gene um, that's uh, uh, located on a particular pair of homologous uh, chromosomes, homologous pairs. Um, so here, let's say that we've got some kind of organism who um, um, is big B, little b. Sometimes we can just kind of write the alleles themselves to represent the parent and its somatic cells. To just do a little quick review of uh, terminology again, we could say that the genotype of this organism is heterozygous. Remember that heterozygous means that they have different alleles. Um, and we could also describe the phenotype of this organism as um, having round seeds. Remember that we would need a legend for this, and so we'll always have to tell you what's dominant and what's recessive. But when you have both different letters, the dominant uh, allele dominates. And so we would just see this organism as having round seeds. Okay, so um, how might this organism pass on its, its uh, genes to offspring through its gametes? Well, remember in the process of meiosis, we would copy these chromosomes and then eventually split up the homologous pairs and split up the copies. And so we'd have four gametes and, and these would all be the gametes. Um, and what I hope you can kind of easily see is that basically um, the possibilities here are that this organism could either pass on its big B or its little b. And so um, I usually like to write that out um, if I'm doing kind of early practice because that'll make it clear um, what kind of diagram I need to make when I eventually cross my two parents. So because this organism can make two different gametes, we're gonna line them up in our Punnett diagram like that. Um, and, and again, you don't just write letters on a Punnett diagram, you actually are, are trying to represent the different gametes that that parent can produce. So um, let's, uh, we obviously have to have two parents in order to uh, think about a cross. So what if we also have a parent um, who is little b, little b in their somatic cells? So maybe we could write that as little b, little b on a diagram. Um, we could think about the process of meiosis again. So maybe we copy our chromosomes and split them up in meiosis one and meiosis two. And it's pretty obvious that this parent can only pass on a little b. If we want to do a little review again first, um, if we also want to talk about genotype and phenotype, um, genotypically this organism is homozygous recessive. Um, maybe I could write that out still, kind of. Um, so homozygous recessive, um, it has the same two recessive letters, um, and its phenotype would be having wrinkled seeds. This organism would look like having wrinkled seeds because both of its alleles are recessive. So just kind of a review there again. Um, and if this organism can only pass on that little b, then sometimes I don't always make a Punnett square. Sometimes it shocks students for some reason. Um, but if this organism can only pass on a little b, we only need to write that once. And so maybe we don't need a two by two diagram. Um, if this organism can only pass on one gamete, then let me just make a one by two. And all a Punnett diagram is really trying to do anyway is just to show all the different ways that two gametes might fertilize. And so maybe you'd get this result if those two gametes fertilized, and maybe you'd get this result if those two gametes fertilized. And so what does a Punnett diagram really tell you ultimately? It, it sort of says that for each offspring that's produced, each little box here represents the possibilities that each offspring might turn out. So um, let's say you're, you're producing a, um, a seed um, offspring in this plant species, there would be a, a, a one in two chance that the, uh, each offspring would turn out this way, heterozygous and round seeded. Um, and there's also a one in two chance that each offspring would turn out this way, which is homozygous recessive and wrinkled seeded. So obviously to finish up a question, we would have to ask you, you know, in most inheritance questions, we're gonna ask you, what are the odds that the children come out this way? And then you would just answer. And we'll do that with some of our practice problems. So um, is it wrong if you just love making a square every time and you happen to write little b twice? 
Um, you know, don't freak out. Yes, if you wrote Little B twice, then you would combine these gametes just again. Um, and I hope you realize that where I said before, where there was a one in two chance of being heterozygous, now there's just a two in four chance of being heterozygous, and there's a two in four chance of each offspring being homozygous recessive. So it's the same thing. Um, it's just that when we do more advanced problems later, I think you'll want to, to make a simple diagram. Okay, so um, let's see if we can do some practice problems. Um, so uh, again, feel free to pause at any time that you feel like you're ready to go. Um, but let me just kind of do a full workup of a complete problem, and I'll do two of them. So um, we'll always kind of give you this kind of information. What if purple flower color is dominant and white flower color then apparently is recessive? So um, the first thing I like to do is to make a legend. So um, use some kind of letter that's easy to tell apart, uppercase and lowercase. So maybe I'll just use R's here. Uh, maybe the capital um, letter is the dominant trait, so purple flowers, um, whereas the lowercase letter is the recessive trait, which in this case is white flowers. Okay, um, now that's just what the alleles represent. Remember that when we start thinking about parents, then parents and, and organisms in general always have two alleles because um, they have homologous pairs in their diploid cells. So um, let's think about the parents now. If, if the, one of the parents is heterozygous, remember that hetero means different, so they have two different letters, a big one and a small one. Usually we write the big one first. It isn't wrong necessarily to write the, the, the lowercase one first. You just won't see it very often. Um, the second parent, it says, has white flowers. So all we are given here is a phenotype. And we have to think about, you know, what does their, their alleles have to be to show white flowers? Well, hopefully you realize that they would have to be homozygous recessive. If they have any kind of capital R, then they would have purple flower show. Okay, so that's sort of their, um, what their somatic cells would have in them. The other thing I usually like to do to prepare is I like to think about what the gametes uh, are that they could make. Remember that gametes will have half, um, or sort of one of each, um, of, of what you start with. Uh, so here, this parent could either pass on its big R, or it could pass on its little R. Whereas this parent here really can only pass on its little R. So that's going to kind of help me because that's going to tell me how big of a diagram to make. So let me kind of move on here. Here's kind of the question that we would ask. Um, remember that we had two parents. One of them was heterozygous and that we decided that that parent could have this or this pass on. The other parent had white flowers and we decided that this was the only gamete that it could make. So I'm just going to make a one by two diagram. And when I do that, I'm just going to carefully make sure I think about the two gametes that are combining, little r and little r. And so what, again, what does this diagram tell us? It tells us that for each offspring that's produced, um, each offspring has sort of a one in two chance, there's two possibilities here, um, and a one in two chance of being uh, purple flowers, that would be this uh, box right here, um, and there's a one in two chance of it being little r, little r, which would be having white flowers, if you uh, go back to your legend if need be. So just you know, to answer any question, you just want to think about all of the possibilities and then how many of them come out the way you want. Um, if we're looking for purple flower potential offspring, that would be this box. So one of the two total boxes, or you could write it as a, as a percentage as well, um, all of those are fine. Okay, so let's try a second problem. As it turns out, this one relates to humans because there are even some, some important human traits that follow Mendel's rules. So um, cystic fibrosis is a recessive disorder. That means not having cystic fibrosis is dominant. So again, let's make a legend first. Maybe we could use ends this time, although you can use whatever letter you'd like. Um, the capital letter is the dominant trait, in this case, not having the disease. Um, and the lowercase is having the disease. All right, so we've made our legend. Now we need to think about our parents. Uh, organisms will always have two letters um, for a particular gene. Um, and uh, here we're given that the two parents are both he uh, carriers. Carriers is another way of saying heterozygous. Heterozygous means that you have the two different letters. So you have a capital and a lowercase. And usually we write the capital one first. 
Okay, so then let's think about the gametes that each parent could make. If each parent is heterozygous, then each parent could pass on a big N or a little n. The gametes have half of what we start with. So if both parents can make two different gametes, then when I ultimately make my square, maybe I want to write my parents um, on, the on the top and the side, and then I want to think about their two gametes that they could pass on, and this parent's two gametes that it could pass on. So I'm going to make a two by two Punnett square. And then I want to think carefully about which um, gametes are combining here. And again, what this square does for us is it shows us all the different ways each offspring could come out. Um, if I wanted to focus specifically on finding um, potential children with the disease, remember that, um, go back to your legend, I think we said that the lowercase n was having the disease, but the uppercase n was not having the disease. Uh, and so um, of all these organisms, certainly this organism would not have the disease. Um, these organisms wouldn't either because the dominant letter dominates. Um, so only this organism right here would show having the disease or that potential organism, I should say. Um, and so um, I have one potential organism out of the four total possibilities. And so each child, each organism, has a one in four chance of, of being that particular box, um, or you could write it as 25%. So um, hopefully this is just kind of a very simple review to get you started, and we'll see how problems get a little bit more complex later on.